This is the Why the Last Man podcast on TV Podcast Industries. We're talking about the season one finale of Why the Last Man, episode 10, Victoria. We don't have to reinvent ourselves. We don't serve Roxanne. We don't belong to anyone. This world will learn to fear us because we'll show them exactly who we are. Welcome back, fellow survivors, to the finale of season one of Why the Last Man on TV Podcast Industries. We're talking about episode 10, Victoria. I'm one of your hosts, Derek. Hello there, fellow survivors. I'm one of your sponges, John. And I am Chris. Or why am I Chris? Well, welcome I back, I still Chris. haven't got that answer. Yes. <laughs> well, welcome back. You weren't here last week, so why wasn't Chris here last week? <laughs> would, be, would be the question for this week. Yes. The, the answer was, unfortunately, just day job. Um, yeah. I was working uh, the, basically what was considered APAC hours, Singaporean hours. There you so, go. So while everyone else uh, and my gentle giants of the podcasting world were podcasting, I was snoring in bed. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Yeah, um, I think John went through every time zone in the world trying to work out which time zone you were in that you couldn't join us last week. But at least you're back here this week. Yes. And John clearly has been watching too much of the Great British Bake Off because uh, he's connecting the episode title Victoria with a Victoria sponge. Yes, I am. Yes. Tasty. <laughs> I'm fierce. Tasty and fierce. There you go. A very fierce Victoria Sponge. We are going to talk about the last episode of Why the Last Man in full spoiler filled details. So go ahead and watch it. Make sure you've seen uh, the finale and all the episodes beforehand because uh, we will obviously be talking about uh, everything up to the end of season one. I keep calling it season one. I'm still quite, quite uh, upbeat, hoping that there will be a season two of this show. I think it ends with uh, some interesting cliffhangers and some good things for another network to pick up. But it is the final episode of Why the Last Man on FX on Hulu. And star on Disney Plus as we get it over here. So wherever it comes from next, it will be different to the future. Yes, and it does leave on a bit of a cliffhanger. A bit of one, but I I, I think we'll get there, obviously, yeah. as we get through the episodes. But I don't think it's as big a cliffhanger as I was expecting, oh, no. knowing it was getting to the end of the season. I think it's kind of a, and now they go off on their journeys. And that's, <laughs> that's kind of where we're left. And that's fine. And hopefully it does get picked up to continue the story, because there's loads more stories to tell. Um as this is the final episode of Why the Last Man, we would love if you subscribe to our podcast on our main feed on tvpodcastindustries.com. we got loads more shows to cover in 2021 and lots more to come in uh, 2022. Hopefully 2022 or 2023 will give us a second season of Why the Last Man. But if you want to subscribe to the podcast, you'll get everything that we do. Uh, just subscribe on tvpodcastindustries.com or find us on any good or evil podcast catcher by searching TV Podcast Industries. Uh, you'll find us there and subscribe and find all the shows we're covering. I know we're covering Wheel of Time and Hawkeye just in November uh, with another couple of shows coming up uh, in December and a couple of mo movies coming up that will be covered for the rest of the year but if you want to join us for those you'll find them all over on TV Podcast Industries we'd also love to hear from you uh, about Why the Last Man or any of the other shows we cover you can email us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com or join us over on our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash TV Podcast Industries guys let's get into the discussion about the finale of Why the Last Man yeah. Yep, let's get going. This show, once again, is based on the comic book series from Brian K. Vaughan and Pia Guerra, with the showrunner Eliza Clark taking over, writing duties this episode. She did do the teleplay for the finale. And the episode was directed by Daisy Von Schuller-Mayer, who directed episode three of this series. Uh, I mentioned back in episode three that Daisy Von Schuller-Mayer has, has done uh, some episodes of, of Walking Dead, another uh, big post-apocalyptic show as well. So, uh, so great that she's been back on board for this finale. Yeah, great bellwether indicator, I guess, that the showrunner is taking up writing duties for the final episode in, in uh, season one. Mm -hmm. uh, that's our normal kind of little, I, I guess it's a, a little indicator um, that, uh, that, you know, the showrunner is involved. Yeah, yeah, you tend to see on shows that we haven't enjoyed the finale of a season that the showrunner hasn't been involved in the last episode. But actually, if, you, if you've been looking at the, the uh, Twitter account for uh, Eliza Clark during the series, um, she seems to have been on set all the time and obviously was in the writer's room for every episode, so heavily involved as a showrunner for the show and been yeah. uh, really in interesting seeing the behind the scenes work that she's done on the show and how involved she's been so great that she's uh, written the teleplay for the finale john do you want to tell us what they gave us with your synopsis for 
Why the Last Man, episode 10, Victoria. Sure. Before the event, at a family dinner, Yorick, Beth, Hero, Jennifer and Dean have a fraught meal when Yorick tries to share his new performance with his parents and sister. Failing to get the reaction he expects from Hero, he baits her by revealing she's got a new boyfriend. Making the night even more uncomfortable, Hero reveals that her new partner is already married with a baby on the way. But why would her parents be concerned when everyone knows her father's secret that he's sleeping with his teaching assistant? Jennifer abruptly ends the meal, and Yorick angrily sends the drunken Hero home with Sam. In the present day, while awaiting an attack by the daughters of the Amazon on the town of Marisville, Hero learns that the government has fallen, and the president, her mother, has been killed in the insurrection. The next day, the Amazons begin their attack on the town, and they soon realise the former prisoners are ready to defend their home. While the two sides are occupied, Yorick, Dr. Man, and Ampersand make their escape, and 355 goes to help the former prisoners. But Hero catches up with them, discovering that her brother is alive, and informs Yorick of their mother's death. She allows her sibling to escape, but does not follow. As the Battle of Marisville intensifies, Nora calls for a surrender on all sides, and her group leaves with their tails between their legs. Roxanne confronts Nora, but she stands up for herself, knowing an abuser when she sees one, and puts an end to Roxanne's control with a bullet to the head, as the rest of the group move to support their new leader, Victoria. Meanwhile, back in Washington, Jennifer and Beth gather supplies from the Brown family home, and meet up with Sam. Before they can escape the city, the Culper Ring surrounds the house and takes them into custody. Finally, Agent 355 rejoins Yorick and Dr. Man with a new mission from the Culper Ring. They've been given supplies, a working car, and coordinates to return to 355's former handler, Fran. The group takes to the road. As credits roll. (laughs) As credits roll, yes. As the season ends. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um Love how the series ends at the fork in the road, the Y in the road, as uh, as the team go off to their new mission, effectively to go back and join the to rejoin the Culpa Ring. Very reminiscent of the opening episode where we had the camera pan back in the streets of uh, above Yarrick, showing the Y in the uh, in the central streets of of the city, and now a Y in the central streets of the countryside. Uh, I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, I saw that on, um, I saw the, the Y at the end and I was like, oh, that looks really cool. That's a nice nod. Completely forgetting that there was it in the, it, that Y, the other Y was in the opening episode. Yeah. And it was only when then I think it was about an hour later, I was scrolling through the old Twitterverse and someone had literally side by side shot at it and I was like, Oh yeah, oh, that's yeah. clever and I threw it at you guys and I'm, look at that's clever, isn't it? Oh Yeah. I, I mean yeah, that's the same. I I was just the as it panned up and, you know, got that aerial shot, I was just there looking going, Ooh, are they gonna go left or right? I was there, I was like hedging my bets and having a bet with myself as to which way they would go, and then it was like, Oh yeah, it's a Y. <laughs> Did you get it right? Did you win the bet? No. Oh, uh, no. I know. I, I hate they, it when you lose to yourself. That's the worst I know. <laughs> it's, it's really bad, isn't it, actually? Like, yeah, they went right when um, I was thinking they were going left. Because for some reason, I thought right was going to take them back to the, the silos that they'd just come from. <laughs> anyway, I thought way too much about that yes. final uh, <laughs> scene. Well, let's find out what else was on your minds uh, for this episode. Chris, you didn't get to join us last week for episode nine. So you, I guess, had hopefully had the pleasure of watching both of these episodes uh, back to back, potentially, or very close together. What did you think of uh, of episode nine and episode ten? Very close. 24 hours difference. Yeah. Um, absolutely loved it. Um, I, I essentially needed a... Um, I, 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 I've said this to you guys before but i must let the listeners know as well i especially when i when i'm doing weird time zones and i'm tired the the shows like why shows like hawkeye coming up and like the wheel of time especially i have to be in a good mood because it is a it's a, a show that either amplifies my mood and makes me elated or i don't want to bring any dark tiredness to my shows that i'm watching so i did i delayed watching episode nine last week so I got to watch this one 
pretty much a couple of hours, about about 24 hours, uh, before watching the finale. So the flow was fantastic. I could imagine, imagine if this was terrestrial TV, back old school cable. I could see this being the, the, like, the two hour finale okay. of Why the Last Man. Like, you could very much do because it was in scale epic. Mm-hmm. Because you had yeah. each episode had these major battles, um, in, in the Pentagon and then, uh, obviously in Marysville. Mm-hmm. Um, so it just, and they each had huge resolutions, each had huge twists quote unquote twists like just more yeah changes to the characters um but overall really enjoyed episode 9 so coming into episode 10 i was on a high i, I thought i was like this is going a very interesting way H- very happy and hopeful that they're going to set up something it, like not the and i think i said we leaving on a cliffhanger we mentioned yes it's not a cliffhanger they tied up a lot of things mm-hmm. it's just they dangled some story threads in front of you Absolutely. that you were like, ooh, what is a culpa yeah. ring? I'm interested. The story's not over, but a, a sizable portion of what we've learned in season one has been tied up quite well, I think. Uh, Correct. Overall. Were you as shocked as the, re- as the rest of the world was when uh, Regina took a bullet to the head? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was cool. <laughs> bit of a, uh, a bit of a shocker. Uh, in the- I, 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 I it literally, I was convinced she was the antagonist. Uh Uh-huh. She, like, and they set it up so well. Yeah. They set her up to be the, the antagonist that you're, you rooting to haste, that you, um, that you don't want. All the while, building Kimberly as the crazy one. (laughs) Yeah. Um, to the point where at the end, you're at the end of this, and we're skipping ahead slightly, but we'll talk about her later. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's who and what you are and what you're doing. Okay. Um, very interesting. Excellent. Excellent. Well, let's take it into our top points for the episode, Chris. Since you weren't here last week, I think we can uh, get you to talk about your top point. And I know you want to talk about Marisville uh, in your point. Yes. Uh, I will open up with The Queen is Dead. Long live the queen. Pretty big moment from this episode. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the, 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 I, I have to admit, um, I've been up and down on the character of Nora. In parts, she was just, I, I didn't know who she was. And I've talked about it on here, this, on the show. Like, I, I wasn't connecting with the mentality that she was, where, why she was doing things, why she was acting certain ways. So over the course of the last few episodes, seeing her very much move back into that advisory role, the woman behind the curtain, um, and kind of in advising a new president. At this time, the president's crazy. <laughs> uh, well, so it's very much a very standard advisory role if you're a president. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, so seeing this happen, I was like, it was really good. And then seeing the connections with Hero throughout this episode, and then seeing the, the, the revelation, I suppose the crack on, um, we, we see her kind of with her daughter. I, I, I'm jumping around quite a lot because there's a lot to the story. Uh, but I think I'll separate it out. Let's just talk about A, Nora and the Amazons and mm-hmm. then the story of Mary. So how's, how's that work from Absolutely. a kind of a, a separation? So in the story of Nora, we get, we see she starts to almost break again when we see the discussion with her child on the moving forward and like giving away a ring and her daughter's becoming a, a woman mm-hmm. um during that and you can see like she's slowly shedding her old self from that point where she does mention was like oh it's such a big day and the daughter goes why i, I don't know it's just something we say it's something it's, my mother told me yeah kind of yes yeah, exactly yeah. Absolutely. And it, and it's really interesting because it ties into Roxanne's piece of advice for her, where she goes, it must be really exciting being a mother in, in the, this kind of 
post male world. You know, your daughter hasn't doesn't have to clock in for a job every day. You know, she'll never have this. It must be exciting that you get to yeah. give her a completely different guidance than every mother in the past has ever given their child. And you can see Nora kind of going, yeah, actually, it's not that it's exciting. It's just I'd never considered that she will never have the same life that I had. Um, mm. So that moment when she learns that she's had her first period and she's becoming a woman is that moment when Nora's almost kind of going, well, now you're one of this group. And now I need to readjust my expectations for this yeah, world. Exactly. Yes. Which I think which I think comes across really well. God, it's Mara and Ireland's performance in yeah. this role has been fantastic throughout the yes. series. But, but she just is able to translate her thoughts directly onto her face without saying a word, it, it, particularly in this episode. Well, that's it. And it, it's really nicely finished off as well, mm -hmm. where Mackenzie says, you're sounding like Roxanne. Yeah. And it's, no, Roxanne sounds like me. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a great line. I mean, it, it's almost like, oh, I wish you could have said that to Roxanne um, oh. as well, just to really put her in a place in, in a sense. But it, it's that, um, it's just that wonderful um realization you know building from her finding out Roxanne's secret that in effect Roxanne is a complete fraud mm -hmm. um even with the prep talk at um the Supermax warehouse um prior mm. to the inspirational speech and Nora's just seeing Roxanne throw that away on real petty and things and it, it's only her advice that seems to be leading her to towards this um i mean even to get to marisville it, for nora like we were saying last week it's for nora it's about the electricity the shelter and the potential of provisions for roxanne it's simply still actually trying to find men that pretty much don't exist and yeah. now now okay yes <laughs> she happened to be right here. She happened but, to be right here. There was a man there. But it's even just, uh, you know, it's it's just so good. And I think um, the other thing I'd say about this, I think this is the real power of slow burn TV and, and development. Because, you know, Nora has been there right from the start. And she, as, as you introduce this, Chris, you know, the queen is dead, long live the queen. Mm -hmm. Um, she has turned into a queen. We've seen her trials, her tribulations at her lowest moment, at her most defiant, effectively, in this episode as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. on, on a number of times, both the, 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 the bullet, um, to the head, but also where she says, surrender in in the battle absolutely exactly and i'm gonna separate to marysville in a second uh but let's literally talk about the ending mm -hmm. that that shocking shocking twist and that was technically a twist and i'm yeah. gonna ask you chris because we kind of uh cottoned on to this about three or four episodes ago when we saw the title for the final episode we went Oh, hang on a second. It's Victoria is the name of the episode. And clearly Victoria is going to be the person that arrives in the last episode. So will it be Nora or will it be Roxanne that changes their name to Victoria? It was what was going through our head. Didn't say it on the podcast. Didn't want to spoil it for anybody that hasn't read the comic books. What did you think coming into the episode, knowing the episode was named Victoria, where you spoiled at all that it was Nora no. was going to be Victoria? No, I did not connect Victoria comic book. Mm-hmm with Nora or anyone else my assumption was there was a new queen bee about to be born and right. I, I like someone who was going to that this wasn't there wasn't a, an even bigger looming threat of an amazonian warrior someone new essentially mm. that was my like i i assumed i know <laughs> What happens when you make an assumption? Yeah, Chris. <laughs> um, I thought they would just bring in that special, almost like, do you remember when The Walking Dead brought in Negan? Yeah, yeah. That, which is last episode, bring in this big, well-known, like, killer person. Right. To that embodies, like, that character we know from the comic books that who yeah. could read, but who within, who could chew the scenery enough in two scenes 
that would make everyone go, oh my god, we gotta find out more about this Victoria in season two. Okay. Yeah. That's what I thought was gonna happen. Yeah, and I, I think the the reverse has been played here. Mm -hmm. They've allowed the chewing of scenes to ferment and develop and gestate across the whole season with yep. Nora. Uh, and yep. that's what's really, really powerful, I think, about it. I, I think the the only thing I wondered, but I guess it would detract from the central group of of Yorick and Alison Mann and 355 and Ampersand, let's not forget um, mm -hmm. Ampersand, um, is... is I thought this would have been the end. It would have been the cliffhanger of effectively for non-comic book uh, readers of Nora shooting Roxanne in in the head. Okay, uh, and I loved how that played with the camera, where you don't oh, yeah, actually beautiful. see it, um, other than the barrel, but just where Nora and Roxanne line up. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was going to continue panning. I thought that was a really interesting choice. Um, and then just straight to the muzzle of the handgun. Absolutely. Especially because the final lines from Roxanne are, you don't have the guts yeah. as she gets yeah. shot in the head. And yeah. I, I love it. I love, I love how, the, how it was filmed. I love seeing Roxanne fall to the bottom of the pool uh, in a real dead man drop. You know, it doesn't look, it looks like a proper stunt person did this job of falling into the pool and falling to the bottom of the pool because it looks like a dead body falling to yeah. the bottom it looked yeah. really really stylish uh, so, you're absolutely right though john the this introduction of nora across the season and building her into the character that she becomes a victoria if we haven't mentioned before for non comic book readers victoria is the, is introduced as the leader of the amazons and has her own agenda uh similar to roxanne's but but uh much more thought out i suppose in the comic books so introduced fully formed as the leader of this group here we're getting so much more backstory and I think we have a very different version of Victoria in the TV show, knowing the knowing where uh, Nora came from and developed into this character of Victoria in the TV show. So if we do get a season two and we see this character, I think the Amazons are actually going to be quite different, but led in a similar way by somebody very strong and, and who knows themselves really well because they've gone through the journey they've gone through in this season. I wonder, because I wonder, does Nora also... Sorry, does Victoria in a season two of this can take and continue some of that feverish Amazonian kind of rhetoric that um that Roxanne used because it worked so well? I think she takes so, the rhetoric that she was trying to get Roxanne to adopt. Yeah. Um, yeah. she gave that rhetoric to Roxanne. Roxanne was effectively go out and find any but any man that's on the planet and we'll kill them. Uh, we'll take everything we want. We'll destroy their areas. She was rounding that into a viable strategy for leadership. And I think she could probably still use a lot of that, but also incorporate lifting up everybody around her to be the yeah. people that they truly are rather than the people she will mold them to be like Roxanne was going to. Yeah. Yeah. Her, her really interesting statement to everybody in the group after killing Roxanne is effectively the world will fear us because we are we will be who we are is why they will fear us not because we're forging this unrealistic version of who we want to present to the world because we are who we are. Yeah they, it's, it's the honesty and integrity of what she wants to do mm -hmm. uh, because you know, she makes she makes that the, the comment that you know I've made, uh, I've had a lifetime of making unreasonable men appear reasonable, mm -hmm. and in the same sense that she was doing the same thing just with Roxanne, yeah. um, and that that's no more. And it's you know we we saw in the last episode as well, it, it all builds back to her having those conversations where. I I had the job, I had the family, I had the husband, I had the car, the house, and um, the kids, the the great job, uh, and so on. And again, we hear uh, in this episode, it's almost a continuation of that, and and the correct name. Yeah, I've been, you know, it, but she's she's rational about it, and she's reasonable, uh, you know. So you have it also then, you know, links back to a conversation with Mackenzie where she says. Well, we're going to keep loving and missing, you know, 
your dad and your brother. Yeah. Uh, and we always will. But, you know, th- there's that rationality to how she is approaching it. Yeah. But she's saying, in a sense, they were also a bit, you know, they were involved in that by effectively her being married to her husband and her having kids. But nonetheless, she doesn't regret any of that. And yeah. you will still remember them and miss them and so on. And I think that's a really interesting um take, actually. I think it, you know, it, it's not besmirching what she had, yeah. but she also recognizes just how much she was trying to fit in through all these different things that we're all expected to do and you know in her job by actually not speaking integrity or the truth because you're actually having to camouflage your employer Mm -hmm. in this case the president to make him look reasonable yeah 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 Yeah, and i'll I'll close on the before we move into marysville and that kind of hoo-ha that happens there um so there's one aspect which I don't, I think they, they'll probably skip, which is in the comic books, the Amazonians body, uh, do body modification to emulate who their leader, uh, who had, uh, and similarly also to emulate the Amazonian, the original Amazonians, uh, in that they would, um, remove one of their breasts. So you basically had this warrior group band of women roaming the US within the comic book with one breast uh, as the the Amazons and hats off to the writing team they fainted on this one they literally they did American football we all assumed Roxanne was because Roxanne had one breast and that was very in line with the leader's of and I you could see with the fever and the, the rhetoric that she did that you could see her request her followers to donate one of them to show the that level of strength and the, the commitment to the goal and etc cetera, etc cetera, as cultish as that was. Yeah, I love how it was handled in the show where we where we had Roxanne making that speech to everybody and show and, and connecting them to the Amazons in the past. And I think you know while there were initiations under Roxanne where we had Laura becoming Athena, that yeah. kind of thing. Nora, remember last episode already ignored Athena's new name and called yeah. her Laura again. So I think under this version of Roxanne as a leader, I don't think they'll be going down the path of following the Amazon in, the Amazons in history. But I love that they paid the nod to it in the writing yes. that this is what Roxanne is trying to emulate in the yeah. past, but I don't think there will be any initiation ceremonies in the future yeah. uh, for uh, for any of the, the characters that will join the Daughters of Amazon. But I do think Victoria will keep on the name of the Daughters of the Amazons and will try and use that speech to inspire people. Uh, yes. Yeah. A very similar speech. Yeah, that she had definitely. Here, but, uh, but I think they won't go through the initiation side of things if it if yeah, yeah, go on. Exactly. I think it was just thinking it was, it was quite interesting. So let's talk about um, the gun battle. Absolutely. Gunfight at the OK Marisville, I guess. Yeah. I guess yeah. so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. Oh, yeah. damn, I should have still sold on that one. Um, yeah, it that was interesting. I it was not expecting the level of... I don't know why I'm there. I don't, I, it suddenly perked me up in mm. that it was a proper Western gunfight. Yeah. They literally they sauntered or cantered into town. Mm-hmm. On their horses. And you could see Victoria slash Nora back Nora back then eyeing and seeing and that they're looking up to the thing and they go, oh, there's going to be a sniper there in a second. Or- but that's exactly who Nora is. She, she's checking all angles all the way through. And I love how that was filmed just to show you once again on the face of Marin Ireland. She is taking in everything around her to make her decisions. Whereas Roxanne is there going, oh, we'll give you a head start getting out of town, you know, <laughs> as if it's a foregone conclusion. She's going to win this battle. Um, but you're absolutely right. It did. Like I really was expecting, you know, the, uh, the Clint Eastwood music playing from, uh, man with no name, uh, but uh, Sergio Leone playing over the top of that uh, of that battle because it really felt like a Western moment. It was really obvious, of course, but I really loved seeing that they were completely prepared to defend this town from anybody yeah. coming into attack. They absolutely knew that this would be an attractive proposition for anybody uh, around. You know, a town with 
with running water, um, with uh, with electricity running. Look at the shops they had available. They had a pawn shop. They had a gun shop right there on their main street. They have I, access to all the food yeah. that's around. Um, so they were fully prepared for this. And it just took a nod from their leader and everybody starts getting ready into their positions. Well, it was that I loved that little Western touch with them coming down the main street on the horses. Mm -hmm. uh, but then the camera... In this case, panning through the um, the the grocery store, mm -hmm. but it, it it was um it was like a DIY store and a, then the gun store, and you just knew um you know how the guns that were were going to take you know come out and, and it was just going to be a really good firefight and Absolutely. yeah, I mean I I loved this um Absolutely, and, and one of the elements I really loved was seeing Nora plan the attack to begin with you had yeah. Roxanne standing over to the side going oh we can handle a bunch of soccer moms it'll all be grand Nora kind of going right what we need to do is bring everybody in make it look like we have more numbers than we do drag them into the middle of the street so that they can't run away and then if we need to get away we have horses so we'll get out of there Roxanne had no plan to get in and out her plan was just to take this town from the soccer moms and then she gives a little uh, a little dig at, uh, at Nora checking to see if Mackenzie played soccer when she was when she was younger a little dig at, at Nora but what you do get are some great moments, the great Western moments. I love the, uh, the gunshot that, that, uh, takes one of the Amazons off, um, dragging down the street, hanging onto the back of their horse. Uh, yeah. By, by, by the rope. Uh, that shot from 355 taking out one of the, uh, one of the Amazons who was trying to, uh, trying to shoot one of the prisoners. That shot through the head from 355 that knocks her off the side of the building. Proper, yeah. proper Western yeah. stunt there. It was really cool. I, I also loved, um, 355 with the you know the the feigning the the damsel in distress mm -hmm. and like and that she's injured herself and then the other gunshot that i thought was really clever i loved it was where she fired into the dirt in, in front of the horse mm -hmm. to make it rear up and, and take out and, and knock off effectively one of the daughters of the Amazon um, off the off the saddle. Yeah. I thought that was just superb. I, it, it, it's really? those moments, isn't it, where you kind of go, oh well, you know, if if this really happened, I, I think I've got two now. One is absolutely, most definitely, you know, well, if there's people on horseback, don't necessarily shoot um, at the horse or indeed the rider, but into the turf mm -hmm. by their hooves, you know. Good to know, and the other <laughs> one, and the other one is, however unlikely, if zombies uh, do arrive, then use a duvet cover to smother them. Um, you know, great thing from uh, Dead Set, uh, <laughs> which I was like, that's so clever that's and so, so they low can't tech. Bite you, yeah. and uh, you can cover them over and get away while they're uh, in the duvet. That's a pretty good, uh, pretty good TV learning, John. It, it really <laughs> is. Um, so and but you know it's, I just have this vision of the old school GI Joe. The more you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so I loved that with three fifty five um, as, as well. Com coming into the fray, you know, sort of just feigning everything, really using her skills, right. and, and you know, from as you say that sniper shot and um, to to take one of the Amazons uh, off. Um, well, take take them out, and and also just the the plan, um, you know, to get Yorick, Allison Man, and Ampersand out the way, and effectively pretend that one of the men were is Yorick. Effectively, is yeah. the person that they're searching for. Uh, really, um, good. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, really, really cool. Uh, the I suppose the other thing as well is that with Nora's plan of getting them out in the street, I like that the uh, the former prisoners have turned that into a kill zone. Effectively, that's why they're all trying to get on top of the buildings so that they can shoot directly down on the Amazons as they're coming in. I love the strategy, I suppose, of the two sides of the attack. That moment when Nora realizes it's all going bad, she's looking around and seeing. All the girls that were partying the previous night in the swimming pool, effectively, all a lot of them shot, some of them cowering under tables, not knowing what they've uh, what they've got themselves into because they were not an attack force. You know, these no. were yeah. these were ladies that were abused by their partners and were in a, a home three weeks ago uh, to try and get over the the uh, abuses of their past. Effectively, now they're being thrown guns and being told they can walk into a town and take everybody on without really, you know, other than a little bit of shooting practice. 
very little strategy given to them, very little help given to them. And Nora's just going, right, that's it. Surrender and let's get out of here. Yeah. Um, and I love that Yeah, the reaction is, well, once they say surrender, we can't. We have to stop shooting, right? Okay, everybody stop right now. It's over. But I think the former inmates like of Marisville, it, it's just really good, you know. I, I'm surprised that they just didn't wipe out um, yeah. <laughs> or, or, or all of them, to be honest. You know, Roxanne, as I say, out of her depth. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, by extension, so were the daughters of the Amazon. You know, they met shock and awe of this planned defense. Yeah. Um, and in, in fairness, the, the, the leader of, of these women did say you have no idea who you're dealing with. You know, there was fair warning, but at the same time, there was fair, well, they've surrendered, you know? Yeah. It, it was um, it was just really nicely done, Absolutely. I think. Did anybody notice the uh, the little smile creeping across 355's face as Roxanne is blasting every bullet out of her gun walking towards her? Yeah. Uh, 355 hadn't even moved from behind her shelter at all. She was fully protected by that stone ballard. And the smile starts to come across her face and it looks like she's counting the bullets. She's like, okay, she has she has a six shooter or a ten shooter. She shot eight bullets right now, shot a couple of bullets beforehand. As she gets closer and you can see she's running out of bullets with absolutely no cover. And you see 355 about to stand up and kill her. She's effectively just counted counted down, waited for Roxanne to get close enough, and then is about to kill her because she's run out of bullets. I just love how that's played again in silence. It's a a really, really good scene. Yeah, 100%. And that's effectively what drives Roxanne crazy and and to go off and uh, and confront Nora uh, to her, uh, well, very big detriment, uh, I guess, uh, at the end of the episode. So uh, we have lost... um, Missy Pyle from the show, and we've lost uh, we've lost Roxanne, but I think overall making uh, uh, creating this Victoria character has been a, a great journey across the season. So excellent, yeah. one, Chris. As I said, the Queen is dead. Long live the Queen. There you go. That I think closes out your the first points uh, for the episode. John, do you want to give us our second major point from the episode? What do you want to talk about? Uh, it is the meal from hell. I I guess we've all had one of those family meals where it all just gets a little too fraught mm-hmm. and tense for whatever reason it might be. And I like I really like this um sort of working its way through this episode. Yeah. And like to your point, Chris, of you know, watching them back to back, it's almost like a two hour finale. Yeah. Then like that's right at the start. It's just this nice little diversion, uh, but one that kind of takes in everything from the season in, in terms of the the relationship between Yorick, Hero, Jennifer, and Dean, their father, uh, and, and and indeed, you know, the friends of the family with Beth and with with Sam. So it it doesn't necessarily start off fraught and tense, with the exception that Hero would seem to be having a liquid dinner rather than uh, any <laughs> solids. Uh-huh. Um, so possibly, I guess it's flagged to the the Brown family for sure that things you know might not be quite so genteel and so on. But you know, we 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 see here Beth talking about different forms of government like that. Uh, you 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 get that notion then of why she was involved with the insurrectionists yeah. um, and, and going after uh, the White House. I really like that because even even uh, Yark and, and Hero's father is kind of turned around to Jennifer, going, um, do you, "Are you going to stand for that kind of thing?" It's like you you stand yeah. on a very traditional platform of uh, of the voting system and the way it works. And she's talking about completely alternative forms of government here, right in front of you, uh, which I really like because it plays in later on to those two characters being together definitely we we have the um i i guess a bit like most of yorick's magical performances at least his teaching of magic his description of his shoebox ultimately gets undone and falls flat because he's not including hero and hero you know decides to just really sort of begin to string him along and yep. and and, and how, you know, why am I not in there? You know, you've talked about uh, dad, you've talked about mum, and, but I'm not there. W- what's wrong with that? You know, and, and baits him with, um, oh, it's, it's just about the straight white cis guy whose mother is in Congress, mm-hmm. you know, which then 
brings up the back of Yorick, who, you know, counters with the bait, and um, where it, it, it ultimately makes the meal even more uncomfortable, um, as he throws the, you know, the dating curveball of, of Hero. Absolutely. And it's just that Hero tells everything because of the thing that's stirring everyone in the face, which is Jennifer's husband, Dean. Uh, and who you know it's a nice little touch just seeing him on the phone off to one side and what have you um w- where she ultimately it becomes honest um and 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 says well his name's mike i've met him it he's married they're about to have a baby yeah. and that's basically why you haven't seen him because i'm dating a married guy yeah. and I love that from jennifer she's kind of like that He's married, but is he getting a divorce? And she's like, no, 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 he's married and he's got a kid in the way. Their, their relationship's going great. I'm just dating him. <laughs> you know, um, did it like this does feel like a family fight at a dinner table. Definitely. As definitely. you mentioned, John, I think everybody's had those uncomfortable ones, especially out at dinner when, uh, particularly when there's a mother in the in, around that table going, oh, I really just wanted this night to go well, and suddenly you're all at each other. But one thing that comes across really well in this family unit uh, is the two kids trying to one-up each other, right? Yeah. So that's definitely my family. I have four older brothers and myself all trying to one-up each other. Yep. With, if you if you dig one one of them, you'll be dug back or they'll dig at another brother and then everybody kind of goes around in a circle at the table really uh, uh, digging at each other and completely embarrassing the parents. Does the context of this dinner happening where it does at the end of the season here work work better for you after knowing hero's experience of this family and that conversation that was had with Roxanne earlier on in the season about thinking about all of those times you're dealing with your brother and your father and how they would have put you down when you weren't in the room. Does that does that add context to this dinner for you? Well, I, I definitely think so. And I, it, it's around two main points of the family dinner. Um, first of all, it, it's just that everything blows up about um, yeah. her father's affair. Mm-hmm. But it's how she responds to that when she's the one effectively with all the eyes on her and being castigated um for for dating a, a married man which is well why why shouldn't i say it um you know why are we all protecting dean's secrets you know your secrets and it connects in to actually where she's being asked to talk about her family in the the supermarket yeah. by Roxanne about well did they ever have you back and we actually get um her speaking to her dad and to Yorick saying you never have my back and neither do you Yorick it's that echo of that conversation yeah. that she had with the um the 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 women and led and forced by Roxanne at, at the price max which I, I thought was really really good Absolutely. and the other big one is because of the way the conversation has turned because Jennifer's the the congresswoman um, she says, oh, I've got to go. Um, you know, it's kind of, I'm not going to do it in this restaurant where I come regularly and people know who I am. Uh, I've got work to do. I'm about to go off. Yeah. Um, and, but it's the whisper into Hero's ear that we never hear. Mm-hmm. We don't know what she said to her. Um, and it, it's that where that to me just feels connected to why she doesn't particularly want to rush back to um, her her mom at the White House with Sam at, at that time. So yeah. I, there's some really nice elements here, really intimate elements that, that connect in with the previous episodes yeah. and, and the the actions of, of of the characters which i thought was um really just superb to be honest That's even post meal sam coming up to hero and the complexities around their friendship relationship um and you know here's quite honest saying I made a mess. Um, but yeah. you, you get a really, I, I thought it was just really cute with Sam kind of 
doing mini kisses with his fingers on her cheek yeah. to, to kind of say, you know, and then giving her the hug. Yeah. And you, so it, it really kind of nicely encapsulates everything from the season based around the family meal of, of, of the Brown family and, um, and their relationships pre event. It really encapsulates it. Uh, really nicely, I thought. Um, and I, I thought this was superb, uh, bit of writing and connecting through this, these scenes, um, in this episode. Yeah. And it even connects in within the episode because it's spaced out, uh, between these because you, you know, you, you get thrown into this moment where it all blows up and Hero has a moment, but you, it, it, it connects from where Hero and Nora are having that conversation by the pool after she's learnt of her mother passing yeah, away. Yeah. Uh, and it, the, I, I just thought it was really nicely threaded through this episode yeah. and just how it threaded back, uh, across, uh, the actions and, and the events of the previous nine episodes as well. Absolutely. And you know, one thing I really appreciate here, I watched five seasons of Lost. I really do actually enjoy seeing flashbacks spread throughout an episode, but I'm glad they didn't do that swoosh kind of noise uh, telling you now we're back in present day or now we're back <laughs> in a certain location. Yeah. There's a great moment where, again, things are kicking off and you hear Jennifer going effectively going you're doing this in front of in front of beth you're embarrassing us in front of beth stop kind of thing this needs to calm down and then you cut to beth and jennifer in the house beth effectively is holding jennifer hostage and the two of them are on opposite sides of this yeah. new battle that's suddenly raging i just love how it just seamlessly trans transitions from those two characters back then to to where they are now uh just simply in a scene change, not in a whoosh, pay attention to this kind of thing. Well, that was really good. Uh, I, it probably doesn't matter, but uh, it's not underlined here, but it feels like this is the last time these six characters were together before yes. the attack. Yeah. I know we see the text messages going on with the with the teacher's assistant. The kids don't know that their parents are getting divorced because they were keeping that under wraps. So, uh, so I guess those text messages are coming in from... Uh, from Dean's partner, who he's now staying with, effectively. Um, but from my understanding, it could be still a few weeks before the event, because Yark's hair grows out and he has his beard and all that kind of stuff when the event happens. But um, he looks a little bit different. But I feel like from this point onwards, Hero is no longer connecting with the whole family. Yeah, she does meet up yeah. with Yark and she does have interactions with him, and they have phone calls back and forth but it feels like this is the last dinner of this six person family yeah a absolutely yeah. I'm taking a two to three month time time zone here um, around that because that's when Yark's face, facial hair grows it's it's it just in terms of all the, the points yeah. the, the, See, the I'm, dad, I'm, just, I'm just trying to remember whether Yark had the beard when he was proposing to to, uh, to Beth because he obviously stays in the house for a couple of months, and now we're almost ninety days into the apocalypse, so he has his his scraggly beard. But I cannot remember in that opening episode and those opening scenes when he proposes to Beth whether he had. I think he may have beard. has heavy stubble. Yeah, I thought I thought he was either clean shaven or, or at least a little a little bit stubbly. But, uh, I, but not, I just not so it would be months from. This no, point. no, I yeah. see. It's at least one to two months because the connection Yard goes off to Hero to ask for money. Mm -hmm is the the key that's the differentiator because she like you don't do that two days three days a week after you do that like a month or so after. you do it your family chris yeah <laughs> okay we shouldn't oh yeah uh, <laughs> the, the 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 bit i love and the bit i just find the most interesting from this whole scene is they still have not told us what jennifer said to hero yeah exactly this has been an ongoing like mothers say stuff they don't mean it mm. like this has been said and it's like like no and like it's been teased i was expecting like like the silence and then like a, a cut to like right up you know that kind of with you always have that it's like someone's whispering and then they cut right to the mouth and the ear and right. then you hear the very faint whisper of what right. they're actually saying my assumption is 
It's something along you are my ultimate disappointment or something. It's kind of the inference here. Right. And and I wonder whether there would be any line specifically that would make enough sense for everybody to understand why Hero is so unwilling to go and see her mother. Like we we know she whispered something to her in her ear and it was enough for the character of Hero to go, I don't ever want to spend any time with this woman, even in this post-apocalyptic world. She said this to me. She meant it. I don't want to spend any time with her. Our relationship is over. So I don't know whether you could actually write a line that would mean enough to the audience to... to the disappointment. To I think the disappointment. It, mi- it might, they- but you'd still got to go get over it. Like everybody keeps telling Hero and over, over and over again, get over it. It's apocalyptic times. Go to your mother. <laughs> it, it could be simply um, Jennifer saying, I already know, and we're getting a divorce. It, it could have been that. Could, um, yeah, okay. Yeah. You know, don't tell Yorick. Um, yeah. Or, you know... Are you happy now, or whatever it might be? Um, it 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 could even be that. Yeah, um, that's true. To I guess, in a sense of, it's almost like a. I don't know whether this is the right word, but whether it's almost a bit like a shaming mechanism. You shouldn't have heard it in public yeah. like this, and um, just so you know, I know, and or it, it's all your fault. You know, no. <laughs> no, well, I don't. <laughs> so I, you know, it, it could be, yeah. it could be something like that, which potentially is why she's not wanting to go back because yeah. she's got that guilt um, of having done what they did. Um, I wonder if we get that if that's a season two. I, I wonder they they may spend more time on it in in there. I'm I'm just not too sure. I need any more than in this episode because. There is, I, I suppose, can I bring in a, a, another couple of elements into the story of Hero in the episode, if you don't mind, after the... After how the, dare uh, you? How, how, and, how, how yes, you... I can't believe this. After the meal. Some, some other stuff, as you say, that moment when Hero thinks that her mother's dead um, comes into the episode. She's been told that there was an attack on the Pentagon, government's now fallen, president was shot in the head. Uh, there's a, there's a yeah. very specific comment made. The insurgents come in, they shot the president, she's dead. They don't say that it was the newly crowned President Oliver, who uh, lasted all of 20 minutes, uh, if she even <laughs> was crowned president. Um, but Hero thinks it's her mother and had, and rightfully is going, well, that's it. That's the end of that relationship. It's, it's gone now. Um, there's no more, I can't go and see her or there's no more. I'll decide to go and see her in a few weeks time or anything like that. That's it over. And she has those moments of reminiscence with Nora where she's saying, you know, Yarrick had a 30 second yeah. vetting process. I had nine hours in a room with a guy when, when she was being vetted to become vice president to the president. Um, why did he get away that way? So the relationship isn't mended, but Hira now believes that that part of their, of, of her struggle doesn't need to be overcome now. She doesn't need to go and see her mother now. She doesn't need to push towards Washington yeah. and go and yeah. visit her mother because she believes her mother's dead. And I think it's really interesting when we cut to Yarrick and his reaction to the loss of his mother. And it's, I have to say, best moment from Ben Schnetzer for the entire season, his, his moment where he's crying on the floor. It feels really visceral, a visceral and really a powerful moment when he feels like he's lost his, his mother. And he says, and my sister's brainwashed and, joined, and has joined a cult, which I think is, again, Yarrick's impression of what's going on. What I think has happened in this episode when we put everything together from what was happening at the meal from what we've been told about how Hera has been treated and how she agrees she's been treated by her family is Hera's has now found her place in the world. Something that she never had before. That's why she was throwing herself into the arms of married men. That's why she was drinking to excess all the time. That's why she had her problems with her family and why she lashed out at everybody around her was because she hadn't found a place in the world where she belonged. Yeah. Yes, Roxanne, not a great person. She's now at least aligned herself with Nora and aligned herself with the other women who've been treated the way they have in the world, and she's found somewhere she belongs now. Yeah, and, and the that's... reaction the reaction from Yarek is she's been brainwashed and joined a cult. Well, she hasn't been brainwashed and joined a cult. She's actually found a group of people that treat her with respect and, that's... and want to be around. Yeah, and and that is that's to me would be the really interesting season two or three or wherever it fits in it, yeah. it is that idea is that she has made this choice uh on the assumption that her mother is dead she's made the choice to align with um with with nora 
Um, you know, we see that after Nora has become Victoria and mm-hmm. shooting Roxanne, she's the one that stands with her as the other girls at least initially have their guns turned on Nora. Yeah. And yeah. um, so, but it's a real, it, sh- it's a real shocking yeah, moment for but, them because they're kind of going, hey, what do we do now? Hang on a second. Our leader would have told us to kill her. What do we do now? And then as Hero joins her, everybody else turns. Yeah. It, it, it's also the fact that, you know, Hero and, and Victoria now are absolutely intimately linked in that Nora knows anyway who her mother was. Yeah. And Hero has also said that her brother is still alive to, yep. to Victoria. She's given that huge, you know, piece of information uh, to her. And it's can, can this new arrangement live up to the expectations given how it was forged for Hero yep. in that sense? I think that has some huge amounts of possibilities there. It does. And interestingly, it also may not need to be in the next season. No, exactly. What I like about this ending for it is that kind of moment of Victoria saying, here we are, we stand together, we'll show the world how powerful we are. And it feels like a closing out of the story of the Daughters of the Amazon in a way. This is who we are and this is how we set up. And if we never see them again, which I don't want to, I want to see them in season two, but if we never see them see them again, you would just get the impression that now in the lands of America, there is this group of women who have forged a new bond together and are are going to be living whatever way they're going to be, whatever yeah. they're going to be living, they're going to be living together and and uh, and working together in a different way, starting again from scratch. And I kind of I kind of like how that's laid out in these in this episode here, where it's not we're now on a mission to get Yark. Victoria doesn't seem to care that Yark's still alive, other no. than how it affects Hero. Yes, which I love. It is my brother's still alive. Are you okay? And that's it. That's kind of the end of it. There's no yeah. mission at the end of it that. That Victoria is now going to get everybody together and we're all going to chase down Yorick. We know his last position. There's none of that as a cliffhanger no. for the season. This is the story of how Nora became Victoria and the leader of this group of Amazons, which I really like. I think that's a, a great kind of ending point for that arc. I, I definitely agree. Yeah. Anything else on Hero from the episode, John, that you want to talk about? No, um, I think uh, the the plates can be taken away from the table and uh, the 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 bill pays. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Well done. That's a pretty good job. Thank you. Um, Derek, what's your top moment? <laughs> um, I'm going to just talk about the Copa Ring uh, in this episode because the Copa you, Ring... What is the Copa Ring? Who are the Copa Ring? <laughs> are you a Copa Ring? We don't know anything about the Copa Ring uh, in the show. <laughs> uh, we, don't, we know a fair bit about them, to be honest. Uh, 355 has been a member. She was recruited by a character called Fran. Um, she met up with, uh, with Agent 525. I know last week we were stu- struggling really hard because we saw Fran's name in the credits and we saw Agent 525 in the, cr- in the, uh, in the credits and we were trying to piece them together. So here we go. <laughs> the Copa Ring that we know right now, 355. We know Fran, her handler, who was the person that recruited her from the orphanage. And we know Agent 525, who was the person that she met when she took a detour from Boston. Right? So 525, it looks like, did actually meet up with Fran, even though 355 didn't. They then left a tracker in the village of Marisville, giving 355 a way out of that of that town and a mission to go back and join back up with this new version of the Culper Ring, it seems, led by Fran and, and 525. Really interesting because um, it looks like they've been watching 355 the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, that, yeah. was, that was a really interesting moment where we have uh, Dr. Mann effectively being uh, 355's sandbag to keep her sleeping and give yeah. her a, a good night's sleep. Love, Love that moment. Yeah, me too. Absolutely great. Uh, really, really, uh, just a lovely moment between the two of them and, and uh, keeping those characters even closer uh, than they have been in the past. And then she wakes up in the morning and sees this flashing beacon. Uh, I was completely confused to begin with because we saw that beacon last episode being smashed in the river and I was going, but did she have another beacon? (laughs) But yes, they broke into her house and left the beacon there saying, follow this to its connector. And when you get there, there's going to be some, uh, there's going to be a a new mission waiting for her. So she found a car, they found medical equipment so that um, 
Dr. Mann can continue her research on Yarrick while they're on their way. It's what it looks like yeah. uh, to going back to the Culpa Ring. Um, they have their new purpose and they have their, their coordinates to get back there. So I, I, I kind of liked that tying back in of the Culpa Ring and the fact that we don't know much about them. and We don't know whether they are nefarious. We don't know how nefarious they are. We don't know whether they're good or bad, effectively. Um, but we know that 355 has a connection with them. So I thought that was really interesting. 100%. Like, the... the uh well, I'll make my joke first, which is, do you think Fran was named after a nanny called Fran? Fran Jesher, remember? The nanny? Oh, I do. And yes. a nanny called Fran. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. There you go. Um, <laughs> yeah, come on. That was giggle worthy, at least. It was. Thank you. Thank I, you. I'm giggling. Thank you. Thank you. Um, no, so with this, I they, they buried the lead with the, 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 the tracker on the, the windowsill because we had just seen her go and drop and smash her one. Mm-hmm. And we have seen 355 wake up in the middle of the town, sleepwalk, dream, hallucinate. We've mm-hmm. seen all these things. So I was like, so did she hallucinate throwing out the... Right. Was that what the story was? Yeah, yeah. And it was like... Oh no. Oh, okay. Someone dropped. Like, all it would have taken was a shadowy figure shot. A three second shadowy figure shot outside their window. I even wonder if you just take out the scene of her smashing the tracker, would it have worked just as well? (laughs) Because now it makes no sense that she smashed the tracker and they just replaced it the next day uh, with a new tracker. There's Um, two trackers. The trackers are paired. So her tracker was them tracking being able to track her and she the the one they just gave her the new one was linked to the the car yeah i think they could have explained it away much easier if they just put her paired tracker that she left back in the in boston with 525 if they just put that in the car that would have just simply explained it <laughs> it's a very that's easy one. Yeah, okay, yeah, you know, that, that's... Rather than having to replace two different trackers, <laughs> it would have been a pretty straightforward way to compare the two of them. Um, so having that scene, yes, a little bit confusing. Also, the fact that it's that she's finding this tracker and the gunshots are going off in town, warning that uh, the attack is coming in from the from the daughters of the Amazon, um, all of that happening at the same time means that you may miss that it's a different tracker coming yeah. in. And at the end of the day, yeah, you could have easily solved in a little bit of writing and a little bit of editing of the of the episode. So it just made a little bit more linear sense. It's not about linear time, though, is it, Derek? It's not points it's tiny, along the road. That should be true. more like an ocean. It should be more like an ocean. Absolutely. One tiny complaint I have, though, is about the gunshots going off in the center of ten and the gunshots that Allison and uh, three fifty five uh, hear. Did you <laughs> notice that the two of them are yeah. different? So the timing yeah. of the ones in the center of the ten are bang bang. And the ones they hear are bang, bang. I'm going, but why couldn't you just have the same gunshots that they woke up at the gunshots to wake everybody up in the town? Speed of sound. Yeah, exactly. I was <laughs> going, it's, it's the distance. It's the the spreading of the, t- the from the, like, you know, someone's going to go, well, actually, and push their glasses up in their face and go professor on us and write out the speed of sound and the distance from the center of town and all that. Yeah, that's basically what John just did, though, Chris. Uh, so I know, but I don't didn't know whether you're having a go at him. <laughs> but thank you, John, uh, for your scientific explanation of why it sounded differently in that house and why 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 not. Um, but anyway, get back to the Culper Ring. Get back to this this wrap up of the episode because the other part of the Culper Ring is is the other quite big part. We we talked a little bit about about Beth and Jennifer going back to the Brown household to connect and collect some supplies, uh, hole up for the night before they go out at night and and leave. On the search for Yarrick, effectively, we mentioned that last episode that yep. we could potentially have all of these groups converging together as all the information feeds through them and uh, and they go out there. Interesting that Jennifer's kind of going, I don't know where he is. I, I have one last communication from him to say uh, to say roughly where he was, which was before they got to Boston, if I remember right. That was the last connection that they had to Jennifer. Um, yeah. And she doesn't know where he is at all from that point onwards. So Beth is now really frustrated with Jennifer. Um, and then... Uh, Sam turns up at yeah, Jennifer Brown's was, house. He yep. went looking for her. So I understand Sam was on the way to Washington. That was always what he wanted to do. He always wanted to go to uh, go and meet Jennifer. But again, just a little bit of 
explanation for why he would be there. Maybe just a, a film, a, a scene filmed of him going to the Pentagon and seeing it falling, or him seeing some footage of it on TV, which I don't know whether it exists anymore or not. But but some kind of idea that maybe he might want to go and check Jennifer Brown's house because it feels like it would be very unlikely for him to walk to her house and arrive there that particular day after the attack on the Pentagon looking for Jennifer, unless he'd seen some news. Maybe maybe we can just say that's what it is. He saw some news saying yeah. there was an attack on the Pentagon, and he tried to check there to see if Jennifer was still alive. Yeah, exactly. Or he he went there, saw what was happening, and so the next point is her, their their family home. Yeah. Um, but I, I was really pleased that um, Sam w- was in this Absolutely. final uh, episode, you know, with in, in respect to the... The flashback and also here uh, mm-hmm. as well at, at this moment. I, I guess he wish he'd probably stayed with um, the high school principal at this stage, yeah. given that, um, the you know, he, he has noticed the van and then they're surrounded. We don't know who by. We, it could have been the insurgents. And then it, we see them in, in a room with um, the culpa ring of... Fran and 525, Agent 525, mm-hmm. uh, looking uh, at in the holding area. Uh, but Sam looks like he uh, potentially has already kind of been interrogated to some degree. Yeah. Um, because now I know when he met up with Jennifer and Beth, it was nighttime. So maybe I just didn't spot it. But yeah. it, it looked like he had maybe. A bit of roughing up at the hands of uh, five two five, maybe potentially. Yeah, maybe, maybe it was on the way into the into the car. I, I was, yeah, I was kind of surprised because you're you're right. I was totally expecting it was the the insurgents had tracked Jennifer down to well her home. Where would she go if she left? Uh, if she left the Pentagon, go to her home. Yeah, I think I think that was my my guess. Now, I'm also wondering how <laughs> many, many members of the Culper Ring there are. They have the house surrounded with two of them. Now no. we know how, we know how capable three fifty five yeah. is, so they could surround with five two five on one side and Fran on the other side if they're both as heavily trained as uh, as uh, three fifty five is. Or is this the Culpa Ring building with uh, fifty female agents who are all former members of the Culpa Ring all coming together and now we're bringing three fifty five back in uh, to add to that number? So. Uh, those are all questions for for season two. That that's definitely the storyline they'll follow in season two. But I I love that final line from Fran going, leave them in that room um, to sweat basically until we know that she's coming in, which is three fifty five is back on the way now. They know that from the uh, from the tracker turning green effectively. So um, so that's what we're going to see if we do get a season two. We will see more of the couple ring and why they want Jennifer. They have Sam. They have um, Beth, and they're going to soon have. Uh, the, our, our other four main protagonists, Apresant, um, uh, Dr. Van, Yarrick, and uh, 355 in their grasp all together in one place. So we that's, I presume, the big story that we'd see next season. I, I assume so. Yeah. I, I One question I do have is, do it look like on the CCTV there are other prisoners um, in, the, in the prison? Interesting. So I'm curious to see who they are. Who else the culprit? Yeah, has. that'd be very interesting to see who it is. Um, I just saw the three. Uh, our, yeah, three I characters. didn't. I didn't uh, spot that at all. Yeah. No. Yeah, hopefully uh, we'll come back to that story in the future. But there's there's lots of other little bits and pieces out of this episode that I, that I also want to pull out. And I suppose uh, one of those is that Yarrick is finally standding up. Um, this is the the moment when he uh, when he's realised that his mother is dead. Um, we get a bit of three fifty five's backstory as to yeah, who was she great. was and what. What actually happened with her family? That her grandmother had taken her out to a to a club at night, which I love. When she was thirteen, uh, she, it was the greatest night of her life. But she was taken away by her father. Everybody was angry in the car, and then suddenly, because of a drunk driver, everybody's dead. So it's her life changed in an immediate moment. I love that the sharing of that to to Yark. The reason she's sharing it, yeah. saying, "I know you think this is the end of your life. This happened to me." I thought that was the end of my life, but it's not. Look at me now kind of thing. So uh, really like that. I like Yark standing up, realizing who he is. Uh, really important character arc for the character of Yark, yeah. given the kind of criticism that's been had by viewers of the show who've never read the comic books, the kind of criticism of who Yark has been throughout this. The most uh, unlikely candidate for for the last man on earth is someone like Yark, somebody that you know is a bit of a loser, is a scrub, as we said last, last episode. Um, here he's realizing... I am that. I am useless. 
I need you to train me and I will make sure that I will uh, put in the work to be trained so I'm not someone to be protected, that I can protect myself. I love that moment of realisation of who he is. Uh, I think it's really a really important moment in the episode. Yeah, definitely. I, I was just amazed that they pulled this so forward. Um, this is a late comic book arc piece. Um, and I think this is a, it's a unique way. It's a different take on what the, on the, 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 why this happens and what happens and how it happens. Um, so definitely, definitely interesting choice. And I, I, I'm here for it yeah, because it too. kind of sets it up. If we get a season two, it sets you up as the cadet yark, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. And it makes sense as well. You know, I, I guess there's only so much you can have, I guess, a bumbling buffoon. Mm-hmm. Um, I, well, I don't know. I, 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 I've, been, I've been 34, 36 years doing <laughs> it and going more strong. <laughs> but, you, you know, I mean, that doesn't, that wouldn't necessarily play on a TV audience to some extent for this kind of uh show i i i mean i'm just saying i yeah. i think i, I, I think i'm Chris with the last it man would also not be continuing on no <laughs> see see it's actually seaman the last man okay yeah, yeah it definitely wouldn't play chris no, at all. no. Uh, that no. would that would be cancelled before it even started production to be honest <laughs> Um, <laughs> but I think we did mention that. That's one of the things about the comic book. When it was originally written, it was about putting the uh, the comic book type of readers in the place of Yark. Uh, whereas now we are changing that story and we are looking at a much wider audience to, to view It's an show. ensemble piece now. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, we really do need to talk about Sonia. Uh, oh, definitely. In the sense definitely. of getting her comic book death, um, but in a quite a different way um, because she gets to sleep with Yark beforehand, um, which gave her, as a comic book reader, gave her two possible options. And there, yes. is, there is one character in the comic book that gets to sleep with, uh, gets to sleep with Yark and has a, a very different storyline. Um, I absolutely love Sonia and how, uh, how much she pushed Yark to get him to admit that he'd only had one sexual partner and that sexual partner was Beth. Um, that's something that comes as a bit of a revelation, uh, later on in the comic books as well. The fact that, that Yarrick is so dedicated to finding his fiance who lives in Australia in the comic books, remember, um, is all played back to the fact that this was his first love and the woman that he thinks he's going to marry. He'd only ever had one lover beforehand and it was Beth effectively before this whole thing. So it does kind of play on the innocence of Yarrick and who he is because he's never had his heart broken. He's never lost anybody before. He's never, uh, he's never had another serious girlfriend before yeah. Beth. So that's why he's so dead set on finding her. And that's his only reason for living is to find her and live out their life together. That's why he's ignoring everybody around them. So I love this conversation again, brought quite far forward with Sonia pushing him going, please don't tell me you're going to be one of those guys. That's really step that believe sex is serious. Uh, and, and that's absolutely who Yarrick is. Um, so I love that it's put, brought forward, but I love that they, that they push it and, and there is, uh, that they, they do eventually do have sex. Well, I love the, I love the line that she uses as well, you know, as she's probing Yorick on, on sex and love. You know, you'll be, uh, Johnny Apple is, um, and the great seed, um, you know, just this, this, this notion of, I guess ultimately what, uh, what Kimberly thinks Yorick will be in, in, in a sense, but I, I just, I thought it was really nice. And I loved, um, I loved Sonia in this. And I have to say, RIP Sonia. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, I'll miss Sonia because I actually thought at the surprise party, again, another great line there from Alison Mann, where she comes to tell Yorick and, um, Agent 355 about the surprise party. And she says, um, I wanted to tell you so you didn't kill someone uh-huh. at the surprise party in this, <laughs> and you could imagine the the situation yep. where it's like surprise, and then they're all kind of sprayed with bullets that are kind of hidden among, you know, in in, in the clothes of, of three fifty five. Yep. Like, love that line. Three fifty five does not like surprises. Yep. She really doesn't. But I I thought um, I thought Sonia was just great in this episode. Mm-hmm. From uh, you know probing Yorick around you know what he thinks about sex and just the 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 little the little 
baits, but, you, you know, affectionate baits, you know, that she was doing to him. But also then, because she opens up as to actually what she did. And you know, I mentioned it before, I thought, I loved her explanation um, of of time. Uh, I, and maybe that's because I'm getting into uh, Wheel of Time soon. Maybe it's because we just did about what if and, and the concept of time there. But mm. I just thought it was really, really, um, really nicely put. You know, that we find out she's, she's killed someone. And these dots on a line that, you know, going from one to the other, that around that bad moment... The before and after are also the worst things that you've ever done. That they're they're you know that they're implicated with who you are on, on the timeline with this one moment. Yeah, um, it's the time uh, before the bad thing. Yeah, and the time after the bad yeah. thing, and that's it. If you think about it, and, and, yeah. and she says, "I like to think as time more like an ocean uh, that you can't pick one moment out because all the good and bad are mixed together." I she is more than just the sum of that single moment that yep. landed her in a court and then to prison. She has had, um, you know, a, a, a full life of many different good, bad, indifferent experiences, Absolutely. you know, that is who she is. And I, I just thought this was, I thought it was really good. I, I was actually really pleased that they kind of, got it together i thought it was a, a, a nice thing for this relationship Absolutely. given yep. how it, it, it's it's you know it's been the um o over the course of their stay and um yeah so it was a real shame that yeah she got shot in the head yeah that was a good shot as well i was surprised that um one of the daughters of the Amazon could do that from uh, from on horseback. There were a couple of very good shots. Well, that, that is true, that and they were the practicing. We, yeah. you know, that's true. I keep yeah. forgetting that Roxanne had them in drills mm -hmm. all the time. So actually, now it makes more sense. Yeah, yeah. not ev not everybody was a great shot, but there were some great shots in there. Um, yeah, but I must say, it also from a directing standpoint and from a camera work standpoint, the shot of Sonia falling to the ground with a bullet to the a bullet to the head out of nowhere, seemingly because we didn't see where it was coming from. Uh, I thought it was fantastically done. A real shocking moment uh, for the episode. Yeah. But um, as I say, that is the comic book end of the character named Sonia uh, from from the books. But she doesn't have the uh, the sleeping with the arc moment um, that we get here. I have to say, there's also one of the great line that I love, which is uh, where Sonia's. Being playful with Yark, you know, we we heard even throughout the episode so many times Yark's being told, you know, this is a, this is the girl that you like, you know, three fifty five is going. We can't stay in the town because just because there's a pretty girl here, everybody knows it but him, it seems. And I love that Sonia calls out, going, "I'm really going to miss you." And what's the response in any like meet cute that's going on in any other TV show? It's usually, "I'm going to miss you too," and then they kiss. No, with Yark, it's. I'm going to miss you guys too <laughs> to the whole town uh, as he's talking to the girl that's trying to chat him up. Uh, fantastic. <laughs> but yes, really sad to see Sonia go. A really good part of the series, uh, this series. Um, I've really enjoyed her in there. I think we have to talk about Kimberly. We certainly um, do. And her, her dream to Damascus moment. Um, <laughs> um, which I, 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 I was thinking, I thought this was great actually. Um, because I mean, you know, we have Yorick effectively having a very intimate sexual moment with Sonya, but then it's the face on Kimberly as she really gets into a rhythm uh, on on Yorick and the determination uh, in this dream. Are uh, and as I say, the road to Damascus. What I what I really liked was just the immediate contrast. Um, I broke up laughing for ages. The, that immediate contrast after coming off this really intense sexual dream, um, to waking up <laughs> with with the fly bothering her around the mouth, and she's like, <laughs> like that that kind of segue um, was really really funny to me. Um, I don't know whether it meant anything, but I just thought. That was a really kind of nice touch because it was a real serious moment. Uh -huh. But when she wakes up immediately after it, she's been bothered by a fly that she's trying to sort of sort of 
bat away from a, a, around her mouth. You know, now that scene makes so much more sense. I thought she was waking up basically throwing up or dry retching because she just dreamed of having sex with Yark. If she's being bothered by a fly, that makes so much sense, especially because she says this is now the plan that she has, yeah. that everybody now has to get, get Yark. But me first is what it seems like. Uh, she, her version of Yarrick in her dreams is way different from real Yarrick in real life, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yep. He looks like he could be on the cover of a, of a Barbara Carthen romantic, uh, romantic novel, um, uh, holding on to Kimberly. Uh, but yeah, that's a, that's a very different version of Yarrick than we've seen, uh, for this entire series. Uh, but really interesting. That's her new plan is effectively, I've got a plan for all of us, a plan for the world. Uh, we need that man. Um, yeah. It. I. I found it along the lines of he's not the Messiah. He's a very naughty boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like no, 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 no. Yarek is not the the, the savior of humanity. Mm-hmm. Come on, people. Uh, but I think that it, it is the 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 Church of Kimberley is being formed. Mm-hmm. But if there's um, only one choice uh, left in the world. Then she's going to take that choice. Is uh, is very much what she said. If there's only one man left um, that can provide yep. what uh, Kimberly's looking for, then he's going to be the one that she will find. Um, so yeah, very interesting. I'm very scared for that baby. By the way, though, that, mm, that, that, Christina's uh, Christina's that is going to be an interesting um, an interesting conversation. I agree, Chris. Uh, I am very sad for poor old Christine to be stuck with uh, with Kimberly um, <laughs> when she says her plan out loud to her. I presume. Uh, Christina will want to be running very, very fast. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it, it was, I just thought it was a really great little scene, to be honest. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And, and, and the aftermath of, of the, the dream, it, it was, it was really good. And one last thing to mention uh, about that scene, I suppose, uh, a great clip on Amber Tamblin's, um Twitter. Uh, go check it out of herself and the actress who plays Christina uh, dancing to Ace of Bases. All she wants is another baby uh, from, from the 90s. Uh, they were doing a great lip sync to it uh, and saying how much uh, that is what Kimberly's plan is for why or her yark. <laughs> there you go. Any other points or any other notes uh, for the episode? Just a quick note from me, which is actually just a follow up. The the social media presence of the, the showrunners, the, the actresses. Yeah. Everyone on the show, even before the the show didn't get, get a season two, or before we got into the hiatus area, or wherever we the 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 limbo that we will be in for a while, has been fantastic. Absolutely, it reminds yeah. me of the boys. It reminds me of all of them doing what the the joking around. Now the boys had Amazon money, and a lot of that stuff was Amazon PR and yeah. marketing. Yeah. This is very homegrown in the roots versions where you're getting Kimberly and Christine in character singing and this is a clip out yeah. from that they own their own personal Instagrams. Absolutely. Like I I would say I'd go back to our first season of Gotham covering that with the cast of Gotham who were all working together on that show and all working really hard to promote that show to get that audience really engaged and it really feels like this cast on Why the Last Man and the crew uh, and the, the writers and everybody behind the scenes all seem to love do, working on the show and want to uh, get a season two together just really so they can work together yeah. again. It seems to have been a really good experience for all of them but you can tell the love that's there between all of them. There's a great post finale interview, really, or, or a live session on Instagram, actually, led by Amber Tamblin and Eliza Clark with Brian K. Vaughan and Pia Guerra talking about the adaptation of the comic into the show for this season and much Pia Guerra and, and Brian K. Vaughan had really appreciated what they'd done on the show. It was, it was really good fun to watch them live talk about it uh, together. And that's been happening every week with different members of the cast, different people behind the scenes. So, uh, so I, I, I wish more shows had that dedicated a, uh, a, a group of people behind them because you get the occasional tweet going, my show's on tonight, uh, from other shows. You don't generally get all of the live tweeting and all of the uh, the follow ups and all the videos and Instagram posts from uh, from other casts. So. And equally, you know, they're in control of it. You know, it's, it seems like they're much more in control of it rather than the the marketing wing yeah. of yeah. whatever. Absolutely, I always uh, I always love the the ones from the big companies going. Um, such and such an actor from our show is taking over our Instagram account. You're going, well, not really. Uh, your PR person is on Instagram impersonating the person that you're saying is on their Instagram account, or at least writing the, writing them in a style that the PR 
a person wants to for your main account for that TV show. Uh, but this time, this is all their own personal accounts and all seem to be having lots and lots of fun with the, uh, with, with Why the Last Man. So that's going to be something that will also be missing, uh, from us for, uh, hopefully a very short amount of time until season two is confirmed. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, John, you have another note about the episode? I've just got two more, uh, very quick. Um, I like just, uh, Alison Mann coming back around the the Sundarat uh, with the two uh, month life cycle and soon we'll be losing whales and bunnies as well so it's just mm-hmm. another kind of nod back to that first uh, introduction of Allison in Boston at at the club yeah and um, and also we have a moment um of of dialogue from the comics as well uh, when Yorick is explaining his magic trick and he is talking about Elvis's um, lost twin brother, Jesse. Do you know, I swear it is from Brian K. Vaughan's Why the Last Man that I heard that Elvis had a twin brother. That's where I (laughs) did. It's the only place I ever heard that I'm sure (laughs) that uh, it's from the comic book. And I don't even know if it's true. I never Googled it afterwards to check and see if it was true. I just went, oh, it must be true. It's in the comic book. Uh, uh, Really good. And and also, yeah, that that discussion with Alison Mann that you mentioned where she talks about the Sundarat dying, that is also from the comic book where she's realized we're now no longer seeing certain species of of rodent, which are the quickest thing to identify uh, as being uh, as, as reducing, I suppose, in society. So she's noticed that after about six months of this uh, of this world, and then real that's her moment when she realizes that it's not going to be them; it's going to be giraffes, it's going to be other creatures going very soon. So that is also taken directly from the comic books. So. Yeah. So nicely incorporated into the show. That I think has closed out our coverage pretty well of the finale of Why the Last Man for season one, we hope. So, gentlemen, what do you think of this episode of Why the Last Man, the finale of Last Man? Chris, do you want to kick us off? What did you think of this episode? Dog. Oh, in terms of this episode, I was very happy with how it ended, uh, with the, the journey from episode minute one Two minute fifty, whatever we got in this one. Mm-hmm. Um, it was well paced, well structured. There were parts that you go, eh, we could have done here, more there, where I think they did enough to make me. It, it, if I knew they were getting a season two, I would have been so excited. It's kind of like, oh great, I know where they're going to go with a few of these things and I can't wait to 2022 where in March we'll get XYZ. <laughs> now it is this... XYZ last month. Yes, oh. exactly. Oh my god, that would have been so much better. Oh my god, that's actually the perfect. The, with this now it is, I think, just almost like it's like part one of season one is finished. Okay. It was the ending enough that it was just the, the that it was kind of like, and they go off into the distance, mm-hmm. fade to black, and I'm like, ah, all right. So as a singular episode, I actually really enjoyed it. As a finale for season one, I enjoyed it. As a finale for season one, without knowing if there is definitely a season two, mm-hmm. I um it, my my excitement has diminished slightly. Just on the fact that it was a great story, it was great encompassing, but I wish there had been more. Mm -hmm. I really do. I wish we had got a few more threads. We had got a bit more in it because it's a world I enjoy. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we may have only got what we got now lessens the, the, the overall impact, but very much so. As a singular finale, very much enjoyed it. Excellent, Chris. Thanks for that. John, how about yourself? What did you think of the last episode of Why the Last Man on FX on Hulu, as I'm going to call it from now on? I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, I'd give it four and a half uh, Johnny Apple Dreams, a.k.a. Yorick Dreams, um, out of five. Right. (laughs) Um, Kimberly-esque, I guess. Okay. You know, uh, Sonya-esque. I just thought it was really just really really good um Mm -hmm. i loved just this really gradual build to actually a a a finale episode for this season that 
covered so much, did it so well, has a num you know, kind of popped in the culpa ring in a, in a bigger way, had the death of Roxanne, the emergence and the reveal of Victoria mm-hmm. from the, you know, the, the chrysalid of, of Nora. Uh, I just really, really enjoyed it. Um, I love, I, I love the sense of humor running through this show. Um, and I, I saw that with Sonia and, and Yorick. You see it with Alison Mann. Um, with a surprise party gag. All that is really good fun. It's, it will be sad to see Sonia go, uh, f- uh, from my side. Mm-hmm. It was lovely just getting that, you know, the, 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 the crazy, um, dream to Damascus moment from, um, from Kim. But again, just done so well. Um, and again, that, that weirdly made me laugh as well. And uh, with the fly thing afterwards, mm-hmm. um, so I absolutely love this episode. Really, really hope for a, a season two yeah. and give this four and a half uh, Yorick dreams out of five. Excellent. I'm dreaming of another season to spend with Yorick. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, totally, uh, totally with you on that. I love I love this. It's the end of the season. I think they tied the show up probably much better than I thought they were going to as they kind of uh, hit all of those threads out in up to episode five, episode six, you know, everything that was going on. I thought it was being set up for that really long term storytelling. As we mentioned, the show was kind of written with five seasons as a, as a guide for where they wanted to, to go with the story. Um, and I think they tied things up quite well and ended off on a good point. And if you read the comic books or the collected version of the comic books, the first volume does that, does that as well. It kind of ends a storyline giving you a view to where it's going to go in the future, but kind of lets you go, right, you've read a story of these characters. Do you want to know more? Then follow on with us for the next season kind of thing, which I think this is what what has this finale has done very well. It's ended a storyline. It's led us to a point, a divergence in the road as to where everybody could go in season two, but it's not cliffhangery enough that if it doesn't get a second season, you feel hard done by. I think they've ended the story quite well here uh, at the moment, but I will feel hard done by if they don't get a second season. I want a second season. Hashtag why lives on. Uh, thanks so much for joining us for this episode. We got a bit of feedback in from our wonderful fellow survivors, uh, starting off with an email to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com from Christina from Black Girl Couch Reviews. She says, Hey guys, I just have one thing to say about last week's episode and it's for Regina. In a hostage situation, shut the F up. Moving on, (laughs) for this episode, it was an excellent finale. I was really surprised where all the characters ended up. Kimmy dreaming of Yarek sexing her was as disturbing and gross. You knew that boy when he was a child, but now she thinks she's Eve and that's her Adam and she (laughs) means to have him. Uh, I just assumed Hero and Yarek would miss each other in the chaos, but alas, they reunite. But boy, the slippery slope Hero finds herself on these days, hearing her mom is dead after the flashback, seeing just how horribly selfish she called her. Methinks, despite the hope of having her brother once again, he's essentially a marked man. She told Nora, but Nora is a keeper of secrets. I will give her that. To what game? Time will tell. But I called her killing Roxanne, who acts like no one's leader. With Nora at the helm, I think the daughters of the Amazon are angry warriors that survive versus man-hating, hunting heifers. This works much better in the show. The suppressed emotions of women in a world of male appeasement. This is a cause one can truly flock to, making them the same amount of threat. But to whom? When Yarek said he only slept with Beth, Beth I yelled at him to sleep with Sonya just for necessary experience. I'm happy <laughs> with the Puritan like the comics because that's just not realistic, but I didn't think she'd get the Regina treatment. Lastly, the Culpa Ring has Sam, Beth and Jennifer and is still active. Please, HBO Max, please give me the season two we all deserve because now that the government is in shambles and things will only go downhill from here, this is effectively the most experienced organized group out there and I want to know what that means going forward. Can't wait for the podcast, Christine. Thanks so much, Christine, for your thoughts. Really good to hear from you. Yeah, thank you, Christine. I am totally with you on um, the, the, the Sonya and, and Yorick part, um, he, he just needed to, to get a, uh, some experience, mm-hmm. uh, or, or under the belt. And, uh, yes, actually, you've made as well something very, uh, a bit more, a bit clearer for me in, in terms of, yes, who will 
um, see Victoria now as that threat, mm. uh, given that certainly Victoria, Nora is certainly not going to be going down the 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 man hunting um sort of route that Roxanne was doing it but you're right she has that information she in fact she is a woman of information that Absolutely. was her job and and hero has um, has given her that really priceless piece of information that's whom is really important and i can't wait to find that out um with a season two yeah but it is really interesting as christina points out this is nora the secret keeper nora specifically told hero don't give roxanne your secrets because she's not worthy of them meaning i am worthy of those secrets so i can't see uh nora crossing um hero and giving that piece of information away to anybody but i do wonder who they're who they would threaten in, in season two uh, if we see them in the future. Uh, Christine, once again, thank you for your email. I want to say I was listening to your podcast throughout this season. Uh, Christine is the host of Black Girl Couch Reviews. I always want to shout out good podcasters. We've been podcasting for six years. And I think in that six years, I think I'm the only one of us that did a one person podcast. Yes. And I did it for about 10 minutes, I think. And it was a very specific, very tight 10 minutes uh, and very difficult because I need to bounce off my fellow uh, co-hosts. Um, Christine does a podcast, I think three podcasts a week on Black Girl Couch Reviews, reviewing TV shows, some of varying length, but is the only host on them. Well done for keeping the energy up and, and really giving some great information about the about the shows that you cover. It's really fun to hear. So uh, go check out Black Girl Couch Reviews uh, for their coverage for uh, for all the shows they cover. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Christine. We also got an email through from Victor Von Doom. Greetings, survivors. Well, at least we won't have to listen to Roxanne's gas anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, which is releasing in bubble form from the swimming pool, I guess, <laughs> Victor. Victor continues, I thought Agent 355 might put her down, but it seems that it was Nora, uh, Victoria's job to do that. As expected, the Amazon wannabes crumble in the Marisville engagement, mm -hmm. and I love the Western-style horse dragging. That girl's going to have a serious case of road rash. <laughs> she is. Yeah, certainly is. Indeed, they should thank Nora for, for surrendering. What direction will she lead them in, though, is the question. The inmates should have locked up the survivors and deprogrammed them. I like the inmates' taste in music, and I hope we we see more of them in the future. <laughs> yep. The culpering Those dance parties were, were great. <laughs> yeah, definitely, really good atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you haven't party for twenty years and you're trying to celebrate a happy Friday party, a happy Saturday yeah. party, you know you're definitely going to be well, good at it. Yeah, eighteen, nineteen months, I guess. Oh, yeah. Um, after old uh, locky lockdown, uh, but we digress. True. Uh, Victor uh, continues with the Culper Ring sneaked into town and left a tracker for Agent 355. Captured Jennifer, Sam and Beth and, and are now bringing in 355, Yorick and Dr. Allison Mann. Was that 525 watching them? I thought she was done with the Culper Ring. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like big plans are in motion. Agent 355's attempt to comfort Y was touching. And it's going to be a long wait for season two while the series finds a new home. Come on, HBO, Amazon, Netflix, SL, somebody step up and pick them up. Keep the faith, survivors, Victor Von Doom. Thanks, thanks, Victor, for uh, the email. And, and also, not just this one, but all the emails you sent in over the course of this series. Really good uh, to get your thoughts. Um, and it, it's interesting, as you mention it, I remember that she kind of seemed to be distancing herself from the Culper Ring. Maybe there's a flashback there in terms of how five Agent Five Two Five uh, is there in um, you know in, in the observation room uh, looking at Jennifer, Sam, and Beth. But I always yeah. thought she said she was going to put a bullet through the handler. Um, and I, I maybe Fran then is someone different. Maybe there's a lot of uh, assumptions here uh, from my part, but yeah, um, I, yeah, it's I interesting. She's it, still there. Yeah, I simply took it that five two five had lied to three fifty five 
Once 355 had left, 525 followed her, and that's who's been watching them. Over yeah, the course that, of this. that's probably that it as well. It would yeah. be interesting that she didn't like step out when they crashed into a tree and help them out, though. If she'd been following that whole time, uh, the the ladies from Marisville came out and helped um, helped uh, them after crash after 355 crashed into the tree. So if 525 or Fran was following them from Boston. They um, didn't even help the out in the car oh, that, crash. That, yeah, that's a it good one as well. It can't be five two five because five two five is watching, um, is watching the president in the thing. But we just see Yarick is on, Yarick and three fifty five are on their way. So unless the thing is like right around the corner, like within spinning distance. <laughs> Uh, it would probably, I think there's another member, another agent of the Copa Ring that's following right. 355. That would have left the and actual tracker there, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I think they may have just picked up the trail when she went to see 525, is, is what I mean, in Boston. Oh, so, it could be, yes. Uh, and then yes. maybe followed her from Boston, handed off to somebody else, that's a, that's a good point, and then went off to, uh, to Washington to meet up with Fran, yeah. So uh, we will learn more, I guess, next season. Yeah, and uh, loving uh, the serious case of road rash uh, as an explanation <laughs> for, yeah, being dragged uh, along the road by a horse. Uh, thanks again, Victor. Uh, great to get your thoughts in. We have a bit of feedback from Steve Brown back on the penultimate episode, episode nine. Steve, give us your life, Steve. Hey guys, it's Steve, and this is for uh, Why the Last Man, episode nine. But I, I'm actually recording this before I'm going to watch it because I, I want to get this out before I forget. Thank you so much for last week's podcast about Kate. I was so confused until you explained, and I, I figured out the or the order of events with that went on with Kate. So thank you for that. <laughs> the doc got 20 years for dealing fentanyl. She can still take care of a head injury though. Oh dang, 355 getting her groove on here and Yorick trying to move up on her. I love that they just let Ampersand just run around in the background doing whatever he wants. So Nora and Hero are scouting out uh, locations for the women to attack. Wow, and that speech there by Missy Pyle. Ooh. We're going to take everything they got. Or a badass with the baseball bat. Oh, this is going to be bad. So we've got a faction inside the Pentagon that wants to overthrow the president violently or or at least, you know, actionably. And now we've got this Beth and her group that are going to violently try to overthrow everything. Oh, that little smile by Kim there at the end. Was that all? Was her indignation all just an act? About her sons and, oh, but good acting by Amber Tamlin. Oh, okay. I was trying to figure out how the, the other women knew what happened to Hero because she told Roxanne, Roxanne told them. Well, so much for Regina Oliver being president. Uh, I guess you guys got to fall back on Jennifer Brown now. Uh oh, York, don't start asking questions that you don't want to really know the answer to. We don't know what happened to the people in this town. So killing uh, Regina didn't hold them off. It made them come harder. And now I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, this is trouble for York and the, the prison people because the daughters of the Amazon are coming for them. Hi, right, guys. Can't wait to hear you break this one down. Uh, talk to you next week. Thanks so much, Steve, for your thoughts on that episode. I love hearing your live Steves for each of the episodes. And unfortunately, it just came in uh, the day after we'd recorded our episode for episode nine. Um, so really sorry that we didn't get that we weren't able to put it in <laughs> to last week's episode. But um, it was a really good episode, though, wasn't it? I'm, I'm really interested to hear your episode 10 thoughts now after uh, hearing this episode nine uh, feedback. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm glad we could be of uh, some help, I guess, in in... Uh, explaining Kate uh, as well. So thanks, as always, Steve, uh, for your feedback and your live, Steve. That's great. And I know you have your episode 10 uh, live, Steve, coming up in just a couple of minutes. Yes, but first, before that, we have some feedback from Facebook from the one and only Dr. Bob Phillips, who had this to say on episode 9. It's definitely a penultimate episode. Accidental executions to escape a terrible, tricky storyline. The convergence of two, at least, of our th- story threads drawing near. And finally, an explosion of a sexy time. This one cemented Kim for me. I wasn't quite sure if she was just playing for power, but she isn't. 
She has an unshakable reality defying faith and she will do anything to protect it. Absolutely. That's Kimberly in a nutshell, isn't it? Yep. Wait till you see doc- episode 10, Dr. Bob. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to hearing what you think about episode 10. Uh, yeah, the, the episode 9, you know, shocker of the execution of a president effectively <laughs> was very interesting uh, and interesting to see that they've had their cake and eaten, eaten it as well. Um, if those who know the comic books, um, you know, they've been able to get away with killing off Regina Oliver and also having the impact that a similar storyline had on the comics on our main characters, which I, uh, which I think was quite interesting too. Uh, uh, a good choice. Thanks so much, Dr. Bob. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Dr. Bob. We will close out our feedback with the second voicemail from Steve Brown, his uh, live steving for the finale of this season of Why the Last Man. Hello, TV Podcast Industries. This is Steve, and this is going to be for Why the Last Man, uh, season one, hopefully season one, not the finale, episode 10. Oh, we start with a flashback all the way to before the beginning. Bit of an interesting family dynamic going on there, yeah. <laughs> he likes me more than Yurik. <laughs> Soccer moms. This is going to be an interesting fight between the Daughters of the Amazon and the escaped prisoners. That's right. I almost forgot. Jennifer is with Beth, right? And they are on the run together. Uh, pushing the human limits of alcohol consumption. I have no comment on that. I guess now we see where the falling out happened between Hero and her mom. Wow. Oh, wow. That's a really great camera angle showing the reflection. Almost looks like they're on a TV screen. This conversation between Yorick and... Uh, I don't remember her name. <laughs> so Kim just had a sex dream about Yorick. And Kim has figured out the Yorick, uh, Johnny Apple. I, I don't want to say it because of your podcast uh, level. Oh, here we go. <laughs> the Daughters of the Amazon versus the prison women. 355. Oh, my God. The reunion between Yorick and Hero. Hero. Oh, my. Oh. Oh, I can't believe it. Okay, I'm. I'm blurry on the timeline here because I've only watched. I'm only watching it once. Did they surrender and then they just let Nora go off into a room by herself so she could have her freak out? And now she meets Hero. Oh, okay. So when they surrender, they just let them leave and go back to this YMCA or whatever this pool is. So Sam, Beth, and the president are being held by somebody. Oh, the Culpa Ring. That's the girl. Isn't it the girl that three five five met and kind of fought with? Yeah. Well, we knew it wasn't going to end on a resolution. Hopefully, we get a second season. Talk to you later. Thanks so much, Steve. Yes, thank you so much, Steve. And it was a resolution-ish, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> resolution to some of our stories. Uh, yes. yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Steve, uh, for the, the voicemail. Really uh, good to get your immediate reactions to mm-hmm. what was going on. And I, I think uh, the, oh, oh. Probably when Sonia got a bullet to the head. I think it I, might I have been. I think it yes. might have been. Yes, absolutely. Thanks so much to everybody who's been sending us their thoughts throughout the season. We've mentioned uh, many times how, how wonderful we think it is that you're sending your thoughts to us. There's loads of podcasts covering the show. We know uh, taking the time out to write in feedback to us is always difficult but if you have any thoughts on anything to do with why the last man anything to do with the season or any thoughts about this episode you can always email us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com uh, that's always open uh, if you want to share any thoughts about each of the episodes you can also go over to our facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash tv podcast industries there are spoilers posts for each episode of the show so no matter what way you're watching it you can share your thoughts there or you can come over to us on twitter at TV Pod Industries over there, and you can uh, talk to us over there. Why not? We always love hearing your thoughts in any way that you like to share them with us. Yes, we do. Yes, we do indeed, because there will be hopefully loads of thoughts uh, streaming their way towards uh, myself, Derek, and Chris, uh, because we will be coming back uh, with. Two movies in Shang-Chi and Eternals from Marvel, Mm -hmm. uh, as well as then on November the 19th, we will be starting our coverage um, of Wheel of Time. Yes, Chris's favorite book. And then on to Hawkeye, Marvel Studios Hawkeye from November 24th. So Mm -hmm. it is 
going to be busy, busy, busy with the lead up till to Christmas. And it won't just be the Christmas shopping we'll be doing. Absolutely. Just to show how busy it's going to be to our wonderful fellow survivors who joined us for the show and our fellow defenders who joined us for the Marvel shows. The Wheel of Time is uh, being released. Three episodes are being released in one day on November 19th. And then the following week, I think it's just five days later, November 24th, we're getting the first two episodes of the Hawkeye six episode season. So we're going to have five brand new episodes coming out to watch anyway uh, in a five day period. So we will see how we'll cover them. Uh, we usually do one episode at a time, um, one episode of the podcast for one episode of the show, but that's quite a lot uh, coming out at one at one time. So uh, we may have to double up uh, a yes. little bit on maybe Wheel of Time or Hawkeye uh, to kind of fit in uh, around, you know, the jobs that we have yeah. <laughs> and the recording time we, we have available. And then just think, these shows go into December, mm-hmm. where in December you also have Spider-Man, you also have Witcher Season 2, and that's just what we know. A few others like, <laughs> could just drop. There's, there's rumors that they're going to drop some additional things and shows, and oh, God, it is going to be busy. Well, if they do, Chris, we're not covering them. We've already yeah, committed to Spider-Man. Exactly. Uh, Wheel of Time and Hawkeye is all the things we've committed to do episode-by-episode episode coverage of. Witcher, we may do the same as we did last year, two episodes covering the entire season after uh, the yes. end of December, because it's coming out very close to a uh, holiday period for all of us, and we may not have time to record that as well as everything else that we're covering. But we will cover Witcher in some way, shape, or form. Uh, but exactly. we're not covering anything else that's coming out in December. We don't have time. <laughs> we certainly don't. But we do love covering the shows that we cover. And what we love even more are our fellow defenders, fellow survivors, and our wonderful podcast listeners. Uh, keep staying with us for our future shows. Yes. Tell us what you loved. Tell us what you didn't like. Tell us everything in between. Tell us what you're looking forward to over the next two months. And why is it us talking about The Wheel of Time and Hawkeye? Because you know we love those shows, so we're going to give you tasty morsels. Make sure you join us for these. Yeah, thanks so much, fellow survivors, for joining us and getting involved in the discussion. Remember, keep watching, keep listening, and keep surviving. Bye. Yes, thanks so much for joining us throughout this season of Why the Last Man. As a special treat for the final episode, as promised earlier on this season, here's the full track of Tumbleweeds by Ketza that we've uh, been using a little snippet of for the podcast throughout the season. I think you'll uh, agree this is perfect for Why the Last Man. We'll hopefully talk to you for Why Season 2.
You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Go on. Get. <laughs>